Hello, people of the world. Hello, welcome to my YouTube channel. My name is Kristana. If you are new here, welcome to my channel. I am the creator and artist back here, behind here, here on this channel, wherever it is in the YouTube worlds. I am the artist and creator behind Bella Renovari by Kristana. My name is Kristana, so welcome. Welcome back friends and family. If you are not new here, if you're not subscribed, hit the subscribe button. Just commit to me. I promise I won't let you down. <laughs> Everything I use is always in the description below as well. The dresser behind me is what we're gonna be doing. I have been doing new bases for a lot of pieces, but the base on this piece is very similar and more modern. It's very similar to the bases we have been building. So we're going to try to do a faux new base look on here, kind of like what we've been doing. My daughter's into super modern stuff. We are going to make over the front of this dresser. It's gonna to look totally different. You guys aren't even going to recognize it. And my daughter's getting bigger, her clothes are getting bigger, and so she needs a bigger dresser. It's, I know, sad day. I wish they'd stop growing. Anyways, guys. This is going to be an awesome makeover. I got it off Facebook Marketplace for $40, I think. Yes, $40. So $40 makeover, $40 piece off of Marketplace, and we are going to completely transform it, and then my kid's gonna get a brand new dresser, or a brand new dresser to her, brand new to her dresser, for way less than it would be if I went and bought her a brand new dresser. So stay here if you guys wanna see me transform this. Also, I want to take a minute to thank HelloFresh, who is our sponsor for today's video. Some of you guys know that I have lost about 50 pounds in the last year, and it's from eating healthy and making choices that put my health first, as well as exercising, and HelloFresh has actually helped me with that because we are so busy. I have two kids in sports, my husband plays hockey, he's working on a master's degree, he works full time, I work full time, I am doing fitness. We just don't always have time to make sure we have all the ingredients we need to make a healthy dinner and fast food is not an option. Before I tell you guys why I really love HelloFresh, I wanted to let you know that the people at HelloFresh have given me a really awesome coupon code for you guys. So if you head over to hellofresh.com and you use the code BellaRenovari14 that I popped up right here, you can get 14 free meals plus free shipping, which is a phenomenal, phenomenal deal. One of the reasons why I really like HelloFresh is because not only do the recipes allow variety in our life, because otherwise we would just make chicken and sweet potatoes every night, and my kids get sick of that. So they have family friendly, calorie smart, pescatarian, vegetarian options, gluten-free options. So you can pick your recipes and it doesn't have to be boring. It kind of keeps it to where you're almost excited because the thing is, is I cook every night and, or my husband cooks every night. And so why not already have the ingredients there and me be able to cook something that is a little bit more exciting than chicken and sweet potatoes. This is a lifesaver for us. I don't always have time to spend you know, your average hour at the grocery store. By using HelloFresh, we save 30%. You can save 30% versus the grocery store because a lot of times when you go to the grocery store, you get things that you don't really need and you're not super prepared and you maybe you're thinking, I might use this in a recipe and then that produce goes bad. It lays out the framework for you to cook these meals. They create this atmosphere where it helps you eat more sustainable. They pre-portion things so that you have less prep, less food waste, and I don't overindulge. So with them sending me the ingredients that I need, there's no guesswork in it, and I'm not going to waste. I might need two tomatoes, and I'm gonna buy five, and then three of them are gonna go bad, and that's not sustainable. So I really like that they give me what I need, and I have the proper amount, great portion size, so I'm not, I'm not hungry, but I also, don't overindulge. I know I have the framework for all of my meals. Make sure you guys head over to hellofresh.com, get your 14 free meals plus free shipping using my code, which I'm gonna pop right here again, Bella Renovari 14 Make your guys' life a lot easier. Let HelloFresh 
send you all the stuff so you don't have to go to the grocery store and think about it and let them help you maintain a healthier lifestyle. The first thing I always do when I am working on furniture is remove the hardware and I put them aside. These are probably going to go in a little bag because I can reuse them later. I am not going to reuse these on this piece. I will be putting gold bar hardware on here. I also wanted to show you the top of this piece. So the top of this piece had a little bit of chewed up areas. I don't know, looked like a dog chewed it up. Could have been hit because this is actually press board. So this is not solid wood and I am going to fix those. So I'm using a two part wood filler and what you do is you mix the actual filler that's inside the can to make sure because it, sometimes it'll separate. So I always mix that first. I scoop some out. Put it on either a piece of wood that I reuse or I do cardboard so that way I can dispose of it later. Then this stuff comes with a hardener and it's usually just a little tiny tube and you don't need a lot of it and you just squeeze a little bit onto the part that came out of the can and you fold them and mix them into each other and this will harden within about 10 minutes and I usually sand it about an hour afterward. But what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna reshape the corner of this dresser and that way that little part that's missing will look, you won't even notice it. So what I do is I fill in the area first that's missing and then I kind of build it up a little bit. And I always use gloves because sometimes you might need to use your finger to help shape that. And then what I do after it is dry is I take sandpaper and then I sand and I shape it with my sandpaper as well. wanted to add some character to this piece and so I got one inch balsa wood strips. Balsa wood is almost kind of like a spongy feeling wood and what this is is it's a light wood that allows me to kind of manipulate it a little bit easier. Since it's so light it doesn't require a ton of glue to adhere it to the surface and as well later on when I put new hardware in there I need to be able to drill through it if my hardware has to go through a piece of this. I like balsa wood because I don't want, it's cheap, but it's also durable and it just makes it a little bit easier for me to work with it. For this dresser, I needed about 25 strips of the balsa wood. And what I did first is I took two pieces and I cut the ends at a 45 degree angle. These are going to be basically my guiding pieces for the rest of this design. The way that you do this design is going to be dependent on your piece, but I'm going to explain to you how I did it. So I basically cut this dresser in half, right? I only worked on the left side first. And what I did is I lined up that 45 degrees to the top right corner of the top drawer on the left hand side. And I made sure that it went all the way down and then I taped it in place. Once it was in place, what I did is I took a pencil and I marked where all of the gaps for the drawers were so that I knew where I needed to cut them. And then I took this piece off and took it to my miter saw and I cut them all. And I'm gonna be using 5 eighths of an inch brad nails and I'm also gonna be using wood glue. So what I did is I went and cut them and then I put wood glue on each piece and I spread it on each piece. Remember this is balsa wood so it is very thin but it's gonna be on the front of a dresser, so I wanna make sure that this is adhered as well as humanly possible. So I'm gonna glue and I am going to brad nail these. So I put that piece back up on that top left drawer to the right hand side, and then once I had it lined up, I took my brad nails and I nailed it in place as well. And then I just continued the pattern all the way down the left side of the dresser.
Once I was done with the first piece on the left hand side, I did the same exact thing on the right hand side, making sure that I lined up the 45 degree angles with each other. And this way I could kind of step back and visualize this design on my piece before I got too far into it. And so you'll see here in a couple minutes that this is basically the angle that this chevron pattern is going to hold. And then I'm going to go back to the left side and just work on the left side. And then I will work on the right hand side. So right now I'm just placing that kind of initial piece on both sides so that I can visualize what it's going to look like and that way I can place them and that way I will have a guide to tell me where I need to put all of the rest of the wood. Now that I had both pieces, I could step back and kind of look at it and I was happy with it. So I'm gonna go back over to the left side and I actually use a unused piece of this wood and I put that in between the ones that I adhere. So there's going to be a space in between and this allows it to be evenly spaced. So I butt a piece up against the one that I just attached and I tape it in place and then I take another one and I tape that in place and then I mark it where it needs to be cut I take that one off, I cut it, and then I put glue on it, and then I keep that other piece on there so that way I know the spacing is right. And then I butt it up against there, and I glue, and I nail it, and then I remove that piece that I'm talking, that I'm touching right now. I'll remove that piece, and there will be a space. And I'll put that piece that is used for my spacer below the one that I am attaching right now, and I just repeat that entire process. So remember I said that I kind of cut it down the middle. Every time that I attach another piece of wood, I make sure that that 45 degree angle, the top one is lined up with the center of wherever I am putting it. So if I'm going down, it's lined up with the edge of that center. Once I was done with the left hand side, I did the same exact thing on the right hand side and it all lined up really nicely. It is kind of a tedious process, but man, this was a $40 find. I spent probably 50 to $60 in supplies. And I mean, it's a totally different dresser. And now my daughter has a brand new dresser that she loves. So if some of your pieces of wood are slightly longer than the drawer edges, don't worry about it. You can take your sander like I'm doing right here and I am sanding down so that everything is flush with the edges. Because balsa wood is so thin, it sands away really easily. And so this is something that you can do so don't worry about if it's slightly bigger than the drawer, you can go through and you can clean everything up by doing this. Once I was done cleaning up the drawer edges, I took my Dixie Bells Dixie Mud in white and I filled all of the nail holes and that way they wouldn't be like a sore, you know, eyesore once it's painted. I always make sure I clean those up. So they're just tiny holes. That's why I use this filler when I do this. There's no need for me to mix a two-part wood filler for this. I just needed something that was quick and easy and would sand away easy. So if you have been following me for a while, you know I've been building these new modern bases for dressers and things. 
But this already has a modern base to it. And my daughter really likes that base, but I'm not gonna cut these legs off to create a base that looks exactly like the base that's already on this dresser. So what I am doing is I am sanding the bottom down. I'm starting with an 80 grit with my three by four electric ray. And I am doing an 80 grit and then I'll go to a 120 grit. And what I'm trying to do is I'm exposing that super thin veneer that's underneath. And that way it looks like we put a new base on it when we didn't. The next step is for me to clean this entire piece inside and out with Dixie Bell's White Lightning. So I'm gonna go over this entire piece with White Lightning and it's gonna clean it up and it's going to degloss it and get it ready for chalk mineral paint. And I'm also gonna go over it with a clean rag and clean water so I can get any residue off. That way I don't have any adhesion issues. But before I go in with paint, what I am going to do is I'm going to show you a little trick. I'm gonna take painter's tape, which this is my favorite tape. It's called Styx, S-T-I-K-K. -K. It is like the best painter's tape I've ever used, to be honest. And I am going to make sure that it is even across the leg. So that way, when we paint this, it's going to look like it has one of those new natural colored, like I've been using oak for those bottom bases and I've been keeping the wood a natural color and I really like it. And so I'm taking painter's tape and I'm gonna put that all the way around. Also, that way I don't get paint on the wood that I just exposed. But this is satin clear coat and I'm taking an artist brush and I'm going to put that on the edge of that painter's tape and what this is going to do is it is going to seal that edge so when i paint over it later on that is going to be the most crisp line you have ever seen for this piece my daughter picked blues so we're going to do a blue ombre and we're going to start with dusty blue by dixie bell and i am going to put two coats of dusty blue on the bottom and we're going to work our way to going to the top. So she wanted it dark on the bottom and going up to a white. So we'll be using dusty blue. And then for the center color, I'm gonna use haint blue. And then for the top, I'm gonna use fluff. So those are the three colors that we will be using to create a beautiful ombre blend. I know that someone had asked me, hey, can you use a more neutral color for a blend? So that way we can learn how to do it and kind of add character to our piece, but it's not a super crazy color. So here you guys go. I do really love this. I think it's neutral enough that if you guys wanna add some character to a piece, this isn't too crazy to where you would still be able to sell it in whatever area you're in, or it will match whatever decor you have. Once I'm done putting my two coats of each paint down to be my base layer, I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna start blending. So I'm gonna use the paint color for each color and I'm gonna use a clean dry neutral brush. I'm gonna have paper towels and I'm gonna have a mister bottle. I'm going to mist the surface. So we're gonna start with dusty blue and haint blue. And I misted the surface. I dip my dusty blue brush into the paint jar and then I'm gonna just wet that transition line right there because that's what we're trying to blend is that little transition line. So I'm gonna add some dusty blue to that tran transition line first. And then I will add haint blue to that transition line. And we're gonna start trying to work those two colors together. Now, because there is an angle and there is wood on this, we're only gonna be able to really go in one direction with this blend. And so I'm going to try to do something just a little bit different. So we're gonna take the haint blue, we're gonna push it down into that dusty blue.
Next, we're gonna take our dusty blue brush. We're not gonna add any more paint to it, but we are gonna mist the surface. And we are just going to feather it in a diagonal direction, going from the bottom up into the haint blue a little bit more than I normally would. And what we're trying to do is we're trying to really feather this with us only being able to really go in one direction without fighting the wood pieces. So we're gonna make sure that we keep this misted with water and we're just going to keep using that brush but i'm going to take a paper towel and i am going to wipe it off regularly so if i get any haint blue on the dusty blue brush i want to make sure i wipe it off because i'm trying to push the darker color up and it will get that light color on there so that's why i keep wiping the brush so we're going to do that and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to take that haint blue brush and i'm going to do the same exact thing so i'm going to take the haint blue brush get all of that darker blue off of it push it down into the dusty blue, make sure I brush it off every so often so that I get that darker blue off of that lighter blue brush. And then this is going to allow us to push these colors together a little bit more easy. I am now using the clean dry neutral brush. I'm gonna mist the surface and I am going to feather these colors together with my clean dry neutral brush. I went through one more time with my haint blue and made sure I wiped it off and I just kind of almost dry brushed it because I didn't dip this back in the paint. And I kind of dry brushed it so I could push a little bit more of that haint blue down into the dusty blue area. Then took the dusty blue brush and didn't add any more paint and just kind of dry brushed and feathered that from the bottom up so that way I could do one last kind of blend together so that way the colors looked really nice together. And I am going to blend that side piece. But here's the, the side trim right here and I'm gonna do kind of a diagonal. So I'm taking the dusty blue and I'm working at a diagonal so that way the blend isn't straight across but it's more of, it goes with the shape of the chevron on this furniture. The next two colors were haint blue and fluff and this was much easier these colors are very similar so it's very easy to blend these you just take your haint blue put it at the transition line and then you take your fluff put it at the transition line and then i took my clean dry neutral brush and i feathered them together these colors are super easy and i've not really blended these colors together often but I feel like as a beginner, haint blue and fluff would be a perfect combination for somebody to try their hand at blending because they are so similar and it's just really easy to get them to melt together. Remember that crisp line I told you about? Check it out. I'm removing the tape. Oh man, the crispness of that line is criminal. Okay guys, so I am sealing this entire piece with Easy Peasy Spray Wax. I'm gonna spray the entire piece and rub it in. 
And then the bottom of this piece, I'm going to put some white wax on it just to kind of lighten it up and add a protective sealant over top of that raw wood. And then this piece is done. I did put some gold bar pools on it, but you could do whatever you wanted. I wanted to make sure that whatever hardware I used didn't take away from the design. So I hope you guys super love this and let me know what you guys think below. Thank you guys so much for watching. All right, everybody, this piece is done. The video is done. I hope you enjoyed that. Remember, that's not a new base. I just worked with what I had to make it look like it was a totally different base. So if you can find a piece like that and you don't have the tools, you can make a modern base that looks like the ones that we've been building. We did new hardware. My daughter wanted bar hardware. Someone said to me the other day, I miss all your colorful stuff. And I was like, I think I just did a colorful piece. So, Really a lot of times when I'm doing pieces, if they're customs, that is what gives me the ability to bring you guys videos is working with my customers and what they want within reason. And then every so often I get to go wild and do whatever I want. So I'm bringing you guys a mixture of everything. I hope you guys are enjoying the direction of this channel. Let me know what you guys think. Also, I wanted to tell you guys that there are a few different ways that you can help this channel grow and that is just sharing the videos and liking and commenting. Um, so if you guys aren't subscribed, make sure you hit the subscribe button. Remember everything I use will be in the description below and I hope you guys have an amazing weekend. Stay on here if you guys wanna see some fully staged pictures of this piece. I'm going to try to get this up in my daughter's room before she gets home from school so we can surprise her. But I really like it. Obviously she's not super colorful like me, but I can't force my colorfulness on her. At least she did some color. She asked me to do white. Ugh, whose kid is that? Anyways guys, have an amazing week and I will see you next time. Bye. Hey darling, can I tell you what's been on my mind? Sick and tired of the nine to five in the city light. Hey darling, we could get out of town See the beautiful world around Wanna see it now Pack our bags and get in that car Leave a little note and we'll drive real far Let's get out, we can leave this city Let's drive to the open Countryside is so pretty